Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Courageous Faith Vacation Bible School. We've been following the story of Daniel all week and we've had stories about faith and what you eat. We've had stories that dealt with dreams. 
We've had stories about fires and furnaces. Today, we have a story about a party, a big party thrown by the new king. Gail, do you want to share with everybody what we're talking about today? Sure. Okay. So today, we're going to look at the fourth part of our story. And this is called The Writing on the Wall. And this is a story about a prideful king, a disrespectful party, and a message from God. Yeah, God is favorable to those who show humility, to those of us who are humble. So during the king's party, there's going to be writing appearing on the wall. Kind of cool, huh? But don't do that to your parents' house. They might be upset. <laughs> anyway, these guys, Hubert and Simba, are ready for a party, right? They've got their platters, they've got their chalices, they've got their gold necklaces. They're all set to go and ready to party. So I hope you are too. This is day four of VBS. We now go over to Mr. Mark to start our day as we do each day with worship and music. Have fun, everyone. See you later. Welcome back, boys and girls, to day four of Vacation Bible School, Courageous Faith. Today we get another great story about how God is an awesome God and loves and takes care of his people. You know what's coming, so on your feet, here we go. Let's wake up our bodies and get ready to sing and praise our great God. Shoulders, yes. Okay, and windmills, forwards, big circles, and then smaller, faster, 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 faster. And then the other way, big and slow, and then faster and faster and faster. How fast can you go? Yes, right. Okay, and let's massage. Are you ready to sing? Yes, here we go. Two more songs today, just like the other days. Text, words on one side of the screen, and hand motions and body motions on the other side of the screen. Lift your voices and let's sing. To my feet and the light to my path by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. He spoke and it came to be. The word of the Lord will stand forever, ever. Word of the 
God with our voices. In today's lesson that you're getting ready to hear, you will hear about how God sends Nebuchadnezzar a message in a strange and mysterious way, and how Nebuchadnezzar doesn't understand what God is trying to tell him, but Daniel helps him figure it out. Let's talk to God and ask him to bless our time together. Gracious God, we ask that you would be with us in this time and that once again, you would open our ears and our hearts to hear your message for us, to hear the, and understand the lessons that you want to teach us today, to be faithful and to be humble and to listen to your messages to us. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Many years passed, and Daniel, now an older man, was still in service to the kingdom of Babylon when a new king, Belteshazzar, came into power. King Belteshazzar decided to host a great banquet for thousands of his leaders. During the feast, King Belteshazzar had his servants bring out the gold and silver goblets that his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. As the king and his nobles drank from these sacred goblets, they praised false gods. Suddenly, a human hand appeared, and one finger began to write on the wall right in front of everyone at the feast. As King Belteshazzar watched, he began to shake in fear. The king called for his wise men and said, Whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means, I will give them riches and power. But the wise men could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. This made the king even more terrified. Hearing the commotion, the queen came into the banquet hall and said, Don't be alarmed. There is a man who can help you. He was trusted by King Nebuchadnezzar because of his great insight and wisdom, so much so that Nebuchadnezzar put him in charge of all of Babylon's wise men. His name is Daniel, and if you bring him here, he will be able to tell you what this writing means. When Daniel appeared before King Belteshazzar, the king told him, None of my wise men can read the writing on the wall and tell me what it means. But if you can, I will give you riches and honor beyond your wildest dreams. Daniel answered the king, You can keep your gifts and give them to someone else, but I will still read the writing for you and tell you what it means. Daniel told King Belteshazzar, God gave your predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, absolute power, glory, and splendor. Because of this, all the nations of the earth feared him. He did as he pleased to help or hurt anyone he chose. But Nebuchadnezzar became proud and arrogant, so God stripped him of his throne and his power. Only after this did King Nebuchadnezzar acknowledge that God alone is king over all the earth. But you, King Belteshazzar, Daniel continued, have not humbled yourself, even though you knew all of this. Instead, you have become proud and honored yourself above God. When you brought out the goblets from God's temple, you drank from them and praised false gods who cannot see or hear or understand. In all of this, you did not honor God or His hand in your life. Because of this, God sent the hand and wrote the inscription. My king, Daniel said, this the inscription says, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parson. Mene means numbered. God has numbered your days and brought them to an end. Tekel means weighed. You have been weighed on the scales and you have been found wanting. Parson means divided. Your kingdom is divided and will be given to the Medes and Persians. Just as the king had promised, Daniel was dressed in wealth. That very night, King Belteshazzar was killed and his kingdom was given over to another ruler. Today's lesson, um, the story we heard about was called The Writing on the Wall. Um, the main point of this story is that pride comes before a fall. So in the story we learned that many years had passed since Daniel had interpreted King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Daniel was older now and a new king, Belshazzar, had come into power in Babylon. Belshazzar was the son of King Nebuchadnezzar. When he became king, he held a feast. He invited all the people of power in his kingdom. And he ordered his servants to bring out the gold and silver goblets that his father, 
King Nebuchadnezzar has seized from the temple in Jerusalem so he and his guests could drink from them. As they drank, they praised their false gods. A hand appeared and wrote something on the wall and everyone was terrified. The king called for his wise men to read and interpret the writing. He promised them riches and power. Anyone who could read or interpret the writing, he would give them all that he could. But no one could. When the queen heard the commotion, she reminded the king of a wise man who had helped his father, Daniel. So Daniel appeared before King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry, King Belshazzar. The king presented the same deal. He said he would give them riches, robes, power. Daniel said, I don't need those things. You can keep them and give them to someone else. But I will uh, read and interpret the message for you. He told the king that God had gave King Nebuchadnezzar power and glory, but God removed him from power because he became proud and arrogant. After he was removed from the throne, he realized that God is the true king of kings. So Nebuchadnezzar had learned that lesson, but apparently his son did not. Belshazzar knew of God's power, but he had mocked God by drinking from those temple goblets and praising false gods. Because of this, Daniel told King Belshazzar that the words on the wall were many, many tekel parson. Daniel said many means number, your days are numbered. And tekel means weighed. You have been weighed on the scales and you have been found wanting. Paris means divided. Your kingdom is divided and it will be given to the Medes and the Persians. And those were enemies of Babylon. So he was telling him that the Babylon kingdom would be falling to their enemies. After he had heard this, King Belshazzar had to hold up his part of the agreement and clothed him with purple robes and gave him a gold chain. That night, just as Daniel had said, King Belshazzar was killed and his kingdom was divided by the Medes and Persians. So that's an interesting story. And um, there are several points that we want to take from this story. The main one is that pride leads to false confidence. Belshazzar, having regained this throne, was very prideful about it. And it led him to believe that he was more important than God. Um, the evidence of this when he threw that party and he treated the sacred objects of God's temple as common things, like they were just regular cups. This pride that he had, it obviously dishonored God. And obviously Belshazzar had failed to learn the lessons that his father had to painfully learn. He thought he was above God and God had to punish him for this. He was arrogant and dishonored God and ultimately brought the judgment of God upon him. And so the main topic we wanna take away from this is that pride comes before a fall. And what this means is after seeing the message written on the wall during the feast, the king was killed and another took control of his kingdom. And this is an example, he was prideful and because of that, the kingdom was taken away from him. So pride leads to destruction, but humility leads to honor. If we remember that God is the most important thing in our lives and he gives us everything we have, then we have learned that we need to put him first and be thankful for what he has given us. Isn't it incredible how God speaks to us sometimes in such mysterious ways? to show us, to teach us how he wants us to live. And that's why we, in all circumstances, can sing for joy to the rock of our salvation. So let's get on our feet. Here we go. Sing our theme song. Sing for joy to the rock of our salvation. Psalm 95, 1 through 4. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song.
let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and it's all Him with music and soul. For the Lord is the great God, the great Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Welcome back, everybody. This is Pastor Jeff with our questions and answers for day four of the Courageous Faith Vacation Bible School. Today we saw a new king take over in Babylon, and we saw special writing from God on the walls, didn't we? So let me ask this question to begin with. Who became the new king, the new ruler of Babylon, after King Nebuchadnezzar? Well, after King Nebuchadnezzar, King Belshazzar became the new ruler of Babylon. The next question, would you pack a crystal glass or a water, water bottle for a camping trip? You know what, I think I would pack a water bottle because on a camping trip, all kinds of things can happen. Things get dropped. Things get bounced around in the car and in the suitcases and in the backpacks. A crystal glass could break and it certainly could spill. But a water bottle stays sealed shut and is safer. It's made out of plastic. It's more durable. It doesn't break as easily. So the next question, what appeared in front of everyone at the feast? A human hand appeared in front of everyone at the feast. That would be scary, right? All of a sudden, just a hand appears out of nowhere, floating in front of everybody. That would be very scary. The next question is, how many different languages do you think there are in the world? You know, I don't really know the answer to this. There are hundreds, maybe even thousands of different languages around the world. There are a lot of them. So who was it at the feast who told everyone to be calm and to seek Daniel? It was the queen. The queen told the king and everyone else to be calm and to go look for Daniel. She remembered that Daniel was wise and that God had shown him how to interpret dreams. She figured that God would show him the meaning of this message as well. So it was the queen that told everybody to go find Daniel. So Daniel was about to be asked to translate the writing on the wall. Have you ever had to translate anything for anybody? Some of you may have, maybe not. A lot of times people are asked to translate a language for somebody else. Maybe someone is speaking to a person and that person doesn't understand English, so they have to translate back and forth between the two languages. 
So did Daniel say that he would accept the king's gifts? Actually, no. Daniel told the king to give these gifts to someone else, mainly because Daniel knew that it was God doing all the work. Daniel didn't deserve to get any reward for this. So let me ask you a question. If someone offered to pay you to mow their lawn, would you do it for free? You know, my son and I once went over to our neighbor's house and started shoveling their driveway in the snow and they offered to pay my son and he said no because we were doing it as a favor. We were doing it out of love. So Daniel was doing this for nothing. He knew that God was doing the work, not him. And sometimes it is nice for us to do things for free for other people because we end up being a role model of God's love for us. What did God do to King Nebuchadnezzar for becoming so proud and arrogant? Well, God had stripped King Nebuchadnezzar of all of his throne and power because he had become proud and arrogant. Remember, we're supposed to be humble and show humility. We are never supposed to brag about ourselves or get a really big ego or big head. Be humble. So let's say that you see a friend burn his hand on a burner on the stovetop. Would you touch the burner too? This is kind of like if all of your friends jump off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? Of course not, because if we see somebody get hurt, then why would we turn around and do it too? We'll get hurt as well. So why did God send the hand and write the inscription on the wall? He was reminding King Belshazzar not to be like King Nebuchadnezzar, wasn't he? God had sent the hand and wrote the inscription because King Belshazzar was honoring himself before God and praising false gods, just like King Nebuchadnezzar had done. God demands that we worship God and God only, not ourselves. If you didn't have a phone or an email, how would you get an important message to someone else? Well, maybe write a letter, right? Or actually talk to them? Or maybe send them a picture of something? You know, today we use phones and emails to get our messages to each other. But this was a case where God actually sent a hand and wrote a message on the wall in order to get a message across to the new king. So what happened to King Belshazzar after the feast had ended? <clears throat> well, after the feast ended, someone killed King Belshazzar, and now someone else had to take over the kingdom of Babylon. King Belshazzar paid with his life for being too proud of himself. So why didn't God just write the message in a language King Belshazzar could read on his own? because God wanted to prove to him maybe that Daniel could teach him something, that God could speak in all languages. I don't know, there's a lot of possible answers to that one. What do you think? Why didn't God just write the message in King Belshazzar's own language? I think God was trying to prove something to him. Anyway, that ends our questions and answers for today. I will be back in a little bit. I hope you are having fun. Ah, the new king had a party, didn't he? He got himself in a lot of trouble. These guys are still eating. They've got the potato chips out now, and they're eating those. They just keep eating. They just ruin their dinner. Yeah, no, they're not going to be hungry for dinner, right? What did we learn today? We learned that pride can get us in a lot of trouble. God actually responds the best to those of us who are humble in life. To be proud is to think too much of yourself, to think that you have all the answers, that you are in control of every single thing in your life. The new king certainly thought he was in control. He threw this big feast. He didn't care what God had to tell him. And God finally got mad enough to literally start writing on the wall. It was like invisible, wasn't it? It just started appearing on the walls. 
And the king certainly didn't like the message that he was getting either, did he? But you know, pride sometimes leads us to think too much of ourselves. We think that we have full power and control over everything. That's not always true. It can get us into a lot of trouble and sometimes even into dangerous situations. There's a reason why your teachers in school have rules for each of you. Because if you didn't have any rules, if you were allowed to just do whatever you wanted to do, everybody might get in trouble. I know when I was in school, if we didn't follow the rules, we got in trouble. I had one or two detentions when I was in school. Did you? No, I never had any. I do not believe that for one minute. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I'm sure that Gail had detention too. Yeah, you know, if a teacher allows everybody to just do whatever they want, it's complete chaos, isn't it? Everybody's talking, throwing spitballs around, throwing baseballs around, nobody's doing their homework. Sometimes we need to have rules so that life can be a little bit better. God set down rules for all of us too, and it's up to us to follow those rules all the time. Like I said, the king didn't like that, but God had a message for him, didn't he? So our big idea for today is that pride can lead to destruction, but humility leads to honor. When we are humble, when we put others' care and welfare first, then we show love and respect to others. You know, when you do chores at home for your parents, you are taking care of them. You are putting their needs ahead of whatever you want in that moment. You know, they probably want to sit down and watch TV too, or read, or play, or do something. But of course, they have to maybe do the dishes, or take out the garbage. If you put their needs ahead of your own, and help them, you are showing humility. And in humility, you show respect for other people. And God likes that. God honors that. And you know what? People respect you more when you show respect and humility to them first. So remember that. Our big idea for today, pride leads to destruction, but humility leads to honor. What a fun day talking about parties. These guys are going to be stuffed. They're going to be sick. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> They've been eating potato chips the whole afternoon. So here, let's do this. Our closing prayer. Dear God, thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. Help us to seek your wisdom as we live to achieve the plans that you have for our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's a powerful prayer. That part about helping us to seek God's wisdom so that we live according to the plans that God has for us. God's plans for us are more important than our own plans for us. What do you think it is that God has envisioned for you? What does God have in mind for you? Sometimes it's fun to think about that. Maybe you can think about what you want to be when you grow up, right? Because I'm guessing that some of the things that you think you want to be may just have to do already with some of God's plans for you. Maybe you can talk to your mom and dad or grandparents or, or whoever, your teachers about that and see what you have in mind for your future, what God has in mind for your future. As always, you can go look at our print materials, our puzzles and coloring pages. Gail, what is that website again? I wish you would remember this, <laughs> really. It's www.bethanybatavia.org, O-R-G, okay? There's lots of puzzles and games and a family devotional on there that you can do with anybody. And if you have a friend down the street or somebody that you talk to or even somebody from school that you want to share this stuff with, 
go ahead and send it to them. Mm -hmm. Or you can print it out and maybe put it in their mailbox. That would be something cool to do if you really can't spend a lot of time with them. So really think of somebody that you would like to share this stuff with and reach out to them. Maybe print it out for them. Put it in their mailbox or drop it off at their house or you know you can scan it and email it to them that would be something really cool um so you know what just find a friend and share it okay and he has had enough potato chips <sighs> yeah so have you yeah i have two <laughs> i've had a few too <clears throat> tomorrow we get to their favorite story the den of lions roar <laughs> it'll be fun Everybody have a wonderful day. We will see you tomorrow. Blessings. Bye.